and we're here with another Xcode tutorial. In this Xcode tutorial I will be doing my first UI table view tutorial. In this tutorial I will be going over just how to set up a UI table view from scratch and then in the next tutorials I'll be teaching you how to populate it and add stuff to it and make views push from it and you know all the other stuff that a table view can do. So the reason why I'm telling you just how to set one up in this video is because if I use the main template that Xcode gives us then you you wouldn't know how to add one yourself. Say if you've got a project that you're working on and you want to add a UI table view to it, there's no point me just using the template because you can't just add a template to your app. So that's why I'm doing this and also it will kind of teach you a little bit about how it works, the behind of it, what Xcode does to set it up in the first place. Um, so file new project and we'll start work. Now um, if you're unfamiliar with the UI table view, just to open up your iPod app and you should find all your songs listed in a nice table. That is a table view. So that's basically what we're going to be making. Um, so first off, I'm not going to select view based and I'm not going to select navigation based, which is what Xcode gives us as a table view. I'm going to select windows based, which basically just gives us two delegates and a window. So that's all it does and I can, use, I can make any application from this view. So create that, I'm going to call mine test table view, press next, save it to my desktop, and here we are in our app. Alright, sorry for that cut there guys, just my computer decided to crash, so yeah. Um, so yeah, if you just look into your iPod app, and you, you look at all your songs, they're listed in the table view. And you will also notice at the top there is a little blue bar that has like a title on it, I can't remember what it's called exactly um, and that blue bar is called a navigation controller and that will control the UI table view and uh, it will allow it to push views on top which is what happens when you select a song, it pushes a new view and you can select to play it or something um, and it will have a little back button on there, you can go back, forward all sorts of stuff like that um, and that's what a navigation controller and the UI table view is. So first off we need to set up our navigation controller. So if we go into test table view app delegate dot h and we will set up our new navigation controller. So copy this line and uh, I'll be back in a bit. All right guys I'm back. That didn't take me very long to write but I did it anyway. Um, so yeah I basically copied this line, pasted it down here, changed the UI window to a UI navigation controller like I said, because we need one of them to control the UI table view. And I named it Nav Controller. The reason we've got this warning is because we haven't synthesized it. So if we go into the delegate.m and we go underneath the window synthesize here and we copy exactly what Apple have already put in there for us. We're going to go synthesize and we're going to call our nav controller we made and we're going to make it equal underscore nav. Uh, nav controller like that. Semicolon. And uh, now we need to make the navigation controller the Windows root view controller so it's visible. So I'm going to write the code in this action here, the did finish launching with options, and uh, I'll be back in a bit. Alright guys, I'm back, and as you can see I've added this one line here, and it's basically calling the window, which is in the delegate.m, which you saw, and it's setting its root view controller to be the navigation controller we just made. Uh, that's pretty simple. Um, yeah, again, all the code will be in the description, guys, so if you need to copy that out, um, just go ahead in the description and copy it. Um, and before I forget, we need to release it. So if we go down to void dialog here, we go underscore nav controller, and we're going to go release. So there you go, guys, two, three pretty simple lines. We're going to synthesize, we're going to make it a root view controller, I mean, uh, yeah, and then we're going to release it. So there we go. Now we need to create the view controller for our for our, um, a table view controller. So we're going to go file, new file, and we're going to use UI view controller subclass. Click the drop down arrow here and make sure you choose UI table view controller. Don't target it for iPad unless you're making an iPad app. Um, and I want an XIB or a nib. Click next. I'm going to call it root view controller. Just for simplicity, you can name it whatever you want. I'm going to drag the files up here just because I want them there. And we're going to set up our root view controller. 
Now this is what holds our UI table view. So UI table views uh, get their information. They don't hold their own data. They ask someone else to hold it for them and then they call it. So it's sitting there by itself and it's going to ask something, i.e. in this case it's going to be asking the root view controller if it can use its information or its data. And it's going to go yes and it's going to store that data in an NS mutable array. So we're going to make an NS mutable array and I'm going to call it pets array. So you can have multiple arrays in here and get the uh, UI table view to list all of the arrays. I'll teach you that in a future tutorial. Today we're just going to be using one array. So we're going to go into the .m and we're going to set up this array here. So go into the view did load. Underneath the super view did load, I will type out this code and I'll be back in a minute. Alright guys, I'm back and as you can see I've added four lines of code. I think, wait no, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five. Um, but as you can see here, we've just initialized uh, our pets array. We've gone pets array, space equals space, two open square brackets, ns mutable array, alloc, and init. Now, I've said in future in old uh, previous tutorials that I'm no code guy guru. I don't know much about code. I just know what works, and I kind of know why it works. So basically, in simple terms this line here is allocating the pets array some memory that's what i know it does if anyone knows any extra or if they know i'm wrong just send me a message or give me a comment because i like to learn this stuff too i'm just letting you know the extent of my knowledge so you can use it in your apps and if you want to help me back and let me know your knowledge feel free to do that in the comments uh, anyway so yep and now we're gonna with our array we're gonna add an object to our array because at the moment our array is empty so we write this line of code here, pets array add object, and then we tell it the object to add. In this case, it's a dog, next line cat, and next line snake. And of course, we need to give it a title, um, so we, I've called it pets. So that's that done. Now we need to go down here and find these three, um, no, yeah, th those three uh, actions, these three uh, things. So that's the number of sections in table view, number of rows in section, and self or row at index path. Um, so number of sections in table view, basically that means the number of sections, kind of self-explanatory, but if you don't know what sections are, it's going to be a bit confusing. Basically, uh, if you have a look at your app again, your uh, iPod app, you will see all your songs listed in A to Z, and you'll see these little grey bars that say a, B, C, D, and all your songs will be listed in these grey bars. They're called sections. There's the A section, there's the B section. Um, if you go into your settings app, for example, that's th that's a different way of showing sections because you have your all your app sections, you have your uh, setting sections for sound and brightness, you have your Wi-Fi and internet connection settings in one section, and then there's a bit of a gap, and then there's a new section. So that's what sections are. Now we only have one array, so we're going to return one section. So I'm going to return one. Next, this is the number of rows in each section. We only have one section, so we're going to return the amount of stuff in our array. So to do that, we're going to go return pets array count. And that will basically count down our array and count how many objects there are in there. There are three objects, so it should be three. And this self row index path takes a little bit more coding, but basically what it does is it sets up the cell. You can set its text, its image, its subtext, all sorts of stuff like that. Um, I'll be going over how to set the images and stuff in later tutorials, but for now I'm going to set its text. So I'm going to type that out and I'll be back in a minute. All right, guys, I'm back and you've typed out this line of code here. You can see I've called the cell, which is made here. Um, and that sh this bit of code should already be made for you, so don't need to worry about that. Then I've set its text with these two bits of line bits of code here: text dot text label. I mean text label dot text. Sorry. And then I've made it point to the pets array object object at index. Now the index is basically which object it's looking at, and then it's the index path dot row, and then we retain it. I don't really know what the retain means, but you have to do it. Again, if anyone would like to tell me, feel free. Um, so pets array, and basically what this does in simple terms is looks at the pets array, 
and gives the name to the row. So that's how you get your song names, for instance. But the, in this case, we're getting dog, we're getting cat, and we're getting snake. And that's setting the text. So when you open the app, you should see the text says cat, dog, snake. So hopefully that will work. All code in the description so you can copy that out.